Good morning, welcome to the morning update from Phoenix Blue on Friday the 13th of January, presented this morning by Tom Colley. Uh, first off, got to apologise yesterday for there being no video. The video was recorded, um, we thought it had been downloaded, there was some technical issue um, and um, we were then in the boot camp for the remainder of the day, um, so apart from being unaware of it till later in the day, um, we weren't really in a position to um, rectify that. So apologies again. Um, a summary really though of what um, we said yesterday was it was talking predominantly about the Trump press conference. Um, the markets had been uh, gone into the press conference in anticipation of um, hearing something that was going to be positive for the dollar, the dollar rose. Um, subsequently, when it transpired that um, the press conference wasn't really going to provide anything um, significant and also it was focused in a different area, um, that being the uh, Russian video scenario, um, basically the comments yesterday was we need to see what happens, we need the markets to settle um, before we get into the markets and that um, was represented yesterday by um, certainly no trading whatsoever yesterday morning at the boot camp um, and only um, some later in the day, uh, intraday opportunities um, that were predominantly technically biased. Okay then, um, so over to today, um, we have had um, overnight, we had uh, unemployment, sorry that was yesterday afternoon, we had some unemployment figures um, from the US, they're the weekly figures that come out, um, nothing, um, well to be sorry, I'm wrong, quite nice figures there, they're positive because the, the number of uh, new employment claims is, da is is below forecast, um, so that was quite positive from that respect. We also had a speech from Fed Chair Yellen, um, but as anticipated, that didn't provide it with anything. Its its focus was really away from uh, the issues that traders um, are interested in. More interest, we had the trade balance out of China overnight, um, which came in well below expectation. Now, one of the factors in this undoubtedly is something that I'll come on to in shortly in the Australian dollar, in that the imports of iron ore um, have gone up considerably um, in recent weeks. Um, so we'll talk about that again in a minute. What have we got to look forward to today? Well, retail sales and PPI out of the US and consumer sentiment. Um, so all the focus on, on retail there, uh, consumers. So um, we'll be looking for some uh, decent numbers to reflect what we've seen over the last few months um, and potentially just to um, keep um, some pressure, upward pressure on um, the dollar. Okay, here's the dollar index, um, and this is the uh, spike up, down, and back really to where we start through the press conference with Trump um, on uh, Wednesday. As you can see, um, the markets got quite excited prior to that press conference. The reality was he hadn't given a press conference since July, so um, and certainly hadn't given a press jump, um, conference post being a, a elected. Um, so. There was a lot of um, uncertainty about what might be said, but there was also a lot of optimism. But I said that was quickly dissipated and we saw a move to the downside. And then through yesterday, um, we had a sell-off on the dollar, um, which into the uh, into the last night um, was reversed. And basically, we've had a test of this level around the $180 level. And now we've had a significant rejection of that and push back up. And um, we're still below where we were earlier in the week when we spoke about um, this test bar here and a close above the 101.80 level. Um, we'll be looking for um, the dollar to get back and close above that level um, to give us some indication that we are going to see further upside into the dollar. Um, but as you can see, it's actually the pullback yesterday, pulled back uh, nicely into this the top of this channel through here. Um, we'd have previously had a test um, through the Christmas period, uh, New Year period here. Um, so technically that's quite nice. Um, we've got the $100 level through here, which um, we'd still be comfortable um, with our... Um, bias of dollar strength for the first three to six months of the year um, if price stays above that level. Um, but at the moment, 
again, we, we've had this uh, press conference, basically more uncertainty. And we're going to see uncertainty in the next few weeks as Trump um, goes through the inauguration process and starts to actually um, deliver on his uh, rhetoric and promises, etc., etc. OK, over, this is the yen pair over here. We had so much of the same thing. We can see the volatility um, through the day of the press conference. Um, we did come down, test a lower level down here, and the rejection there wasn't quite as strong. Um, so the yen didn't um, quite weaken to the extent, let's say, that the dollar strengthened through the end of the session. Um, again, though, we've got a clear level through here about 114.50. Um, this market, we would, uh, we are with the dollar strength naturally looking for yen weakness on this side, um, but this is also reflecting a risk off scenario um, to a certain extent that we're seeing, and you'll see that when we look at gold um, later on in the video, when um, we can see gold uh, rising into the uncertainty, certainly after that press conference. So if we have opportunities through to trade back up to this uh, 118 level here, we would take those in conjunction with dollar strength. However, we want to see a significant break and close above this level because we've got this long-term uh, downward trend line. We've also got a commitment to traders signal um, that suggests that the market has reached an extreme there. It, it is possible that that signal could have dissipated by the time we get back up there. But either way, we'll want to see a clear break above these highs and a retest of the trend line stroke level before we see further long side to that, as I've said, in conjunction with dollar strength. Uh, over on the euro, bit of a messy chart at the moment. Um, again, we've seen the, uh, the spike, but there aren't any clear levels through there. Um, We've got a commitment of traders uh, extreme signal here to the short side, um, which appeared a couple of weeks ago. Um, there isn't a level that we'd look to trade through. There's a level through here. Um, I think that's about 1072, something like that. There's a level through there. But we would be looking to trade that with price action or a change of cyclicity back to the downside um, in uh, correlation with the dollar index. This level through here at about 108.650 um, is probably a more significant level. Um, we had a big test up of it through this period here. That's usually pretty significant. These tests usually go to some sort of level. Um, so we may see that as an opportunity if we see that dollar uh, index pull back to the $100 level. Okay, here's the Aussie chart. Um, I mentioned this briefly earlier. Um, clearly a, a very bullish chart at the moment. Um, into or, and through the press conference when the dollar was strengthening, it was the Aussie which was resisting that dollar strength the most. Quite possibly the reason that for that is um, China has been importing um, a much greater level of iron ore. Um, the, there has been a, a somewhat unexpected dramatic increase in steel production. And that's coincided with a reduction of mining input output um, of iron ore in China itself, requiring um, further imports from its major suppliers, which are Australia and Brazil. Um, iron ore being the most significant export product, uh, export product from Australia, and China being its by mar by far the most significant um, market for that. So we've seen we're seeing a positive move there when we could say we've got a somewhat um, maybe it may only be a short term um, recovery in the price of those commodities. So this is a market that um, we'll certainly be cautious uh, at the moment to the short side. Um, if we do see a further dollar weakness, we've got a lovely level here. We'll see, look for a break, the usual retest to take that um, further to the long side in correlation with that potential dollar move on the uh, dollar index down to that $100 level. Canadian dollar, um, what we saw here was, again, yesterday we saw a, a lovely test of this level through here. Um, the rejection of that, um, we've got a real low test candle and this morning we're sitting with an entry uh, above yesterday's highs looking for price to break through that um, at which time it will have broken through not only support at this level which is 
pretty significant, but also um, it will have broken back above um, this upward trend line here. Um, we are watching, obviously, CAD in conjunction with um, crude oil. We've seen uh, an increase in the price of crude oil despite Wednesday's US um, crude inventories uh, disappointing slightly. Um, potentially this is on the back of uh, data which suggests that the Saudis are actually cutting their production to a greater extent um, than the level that they actually agreed with the rest of the OPEC members, Russia, etc. Um, so having got... Um, shall we say, most parties on side, um, it looks like the Saudis are actually pushing a little bit harder um, than they said they would um, in order to um, push the price higher. Two key levels here, the $52 level and the $55 level. Um, potentially, we've got a range between the, these levels, so we will potentially be looking for an opportunity um, to trade at this level to the short side. If we get a break above, then um, the next level looks um, around the $60 level, and obviously we'll be looking to correlate that with a, a strengthening uh, in the Canadian dollar, bearing in mind that that strengthening could be offset by a US dollar strength. Gold, um, well, as we said, we've had a bullish move so far, well, really since mid-December. Um, certainly through um, the, this week, we've seen um, gold, the demand for gold rise um, through the uncertainty of the Trump press conference. Um, we got up to a significant level up here yesterday. We actually are short this market on an intraday basis. Um, we've added in and potentially looking um, to add in again today. Um, to take that to the further down to the downside, um, but we'll be looking for this level about 11.72 again, um, and looking um, for opportunities um, again to the long side. All the metals um, are seasonally bullish through. Um, let's just call it the first quarter to um, be simple. I think I've mentioned before um, we've got a, a great deal of interest on platinum in that respect because it is particularly bullish, um, and also palladium. Okay, guys, so that's really a summary of where we are this um, week. We'll be going into our analysis at the weekend with some um, better COT data, having the COT data being slightly delayed. The will actually be from a, a full trading week, shall we call it. Um, so we um, should have full volatility back in the markets, but we will be cautious um, simply because we are waiting to see how... Um, Trump plays his hand in the next few weeks um, as he becomes the active uh, president of the US. Okay, um, thanks for listening. We'll be with you again Monday morning. Have a great weekend. Do your analysis and uh, let's hope we have a, a nice successful week um, going forward. Take care. Goodbye.